Welcome to this Sotom Brain Hub video on Alzheimer's disease. With the aid of some diagrams, I'm going to describe the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's, the resulting microscopic and macroscopic changes which take place, and some of the clinical features which manifest with these changes. So, what is Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is a chronic neurodegenerative disease of the cortex, which begins insidiously as impairment of higher cognitive function, and progresses to result in deficits of memory, visuospatial orientation, judgment, personality and language. These changes typically occur over a 5 to 10 year period. First, let's talk about the functioning of a healthy neuron. In the part of the cell membrane of neurons which forms a synapse, there are numerous proteins called amyloid precursor proteins, otherwise known as APP. And as with all proteins, old versions of APP are degraded and new ones take their place. APP is normally broken down into soluble peptides by an enzyme called alpha secretase. These soluble peptides exist in the extracellular space and are themselves metabolized and pose no problem. In Alzheimer's disease, part of this process of APP cleavage becomes impaired, which results in progressive neuronal loss in selective parts of the cortex. Before we take a more detailed look at the mechanism underlying this neuronal death, let's examine the gross anatomical changes which take place in Alzheimer's disease. So the macroscopic changes in Alzheimer's include cerebral atrophy with narrowing of the gyri and widening of the sulci, as well as dilation of the ventricles, which occurs secondary to those former changes. Structures of the medial temporal lobe, principally the hippocampi and the amygdalae, are involved early in the disease and become severely atrophied in the later stages. Other structures, such as the frontal and parietal lobes, as well as subcortical nuclei, are also involved in later stages of the disease. Let's now look at some specific changes which take place on the molecular level in brains affected with Alzheimer's disease. The pathological hallmark of Alzheimer's is the accumulation of amyloid beta and tau proteins, and the mechanism underlying this buildup is known as the amyloidogenic pathway. As mentioned earlier, a normal healthy neuron will degrade old amyloid precursor proteins in its membrane and replace them with new ones. The byproduct of this degradation produces harmless soluble peptides. However, in Alzheimer's disease, a different enzyme called beta secretase cleaves APP into an insoluble peptide known as amyloid beta. Individual amyloid beta peptides aggregate together to form two larger toxic molecules known as amyloid beta oligomers and amyloid beta plaques. The oligomers cause neuronal apoptosis by increasing the neuron's permeability to calcium and the plaques disrupt neuronal signaling by accumulating in the extracellular space. Plaques can also accumulate on cerebral blood vessels in a process known as cerebral amyloid angiopathy which increases the likelihood of small cerebral hemorrhages. Another protein called tau also contributes towards neuronal death and Alzheimer's. In healthy neurons, tau protein forms part of the cell's microtubules, but in Alzheimer's disease, tau becomes phosphorylated by the effects of amyloid beta and accumulates to form neurofibrillary tangles within the neurons of affected brain areas. As a very quick recap of the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's, you should know that APP is pathologically cleaved by beta secretase, forming extracellular insoluble amyloid beta oligomers and plaques. And secondary to this, tau protein undergoes phosphorylation and accumulates into intracellular neurofibrillary tangles. So now I want to briefly talk about an important structure involved in learning and processing new memories and how its atrophy through Alzheimer's disease can lead to impaired memory. The diagram shown here illustrates the complex anatomy of a structure located in the medial temporal lobe called the hippocampal formation. The hippocampal formation has three components, the dentate gyrus, the hippocampus proper and the subiculum. The hippocampus proper is the S-shaped sh structure which is outlined in red on the diagram. Long-term potentiation is thought to be a very important mechanism by which memories are formed. A high frequency activity at synapses within the hippocampal formation results in a long lasting increase in synaptic strength between those neurons involved in the synapses. In other words, lots of firing of postsynaptic neurons, caused by stimulation by presynaptic neurons, increases the efficiency of synaptic transmission of future impulses. Through the selective loss of neurons of the hippocampal formation, 
as is the case in Alzheimer's disease, one of the classical clinical features of Alzheimer's, impaired episodic memory, is manifested. Let us now go over some of the important clinical features of Alzheimer's. The clinical features of Alzheimer's are cumulative and temporal, which means more severe symptomatology occurs as cortical atrophy progresses over time. The symptoms can be divided with respect to the stage of the disease, but for simplicity I shall describe the symptoms in general. Impaired episodic memory affects the patient's ability to learn, retain and process new information. This impairment is progressive and only worsens with time. In contrast, patients' distant memory is often preserved until the late stages of disease. Language tends to become diminished with time, specifically with respect to word finding, however personality tends to remain unaffected. Other common clinical features of Alzheimer's include apraxia, which is the reduced ability to carry out skilled motor activity, agnosia, the failure to recognise objects, people and places, and impaired executive function, for example, impairment of organising and planning. Some late features of Alzheimer's include extreme apathy, myoclonus, which may be accompanied by seizures, and dysphagia, which predisposes to complications such as pneumonia, which is itself often a terminal event. Alzheimer's disease can be classified into familial and sporadic forms. Familial Alzheimer's is associated with mutations in amyloid precursor protein, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2, and it is always an early onset disease, starting between 30 to 40 years of age. Familial Alzheimer's comprises just 5 to 10% of all cases. Now, sporadic Alzheimer's is far more common, comprising the remaining 90 to 95% of cases, and it is the result of interactions between genes and environment. Homozygous expression of apolipoprotein E epsilon 4, which is an allele, is associated with an increased likelihood of developing sporadic Alzheimer's. The vast majority of sporadic Alzheimer's disease occurs in those over the age of 65. The single greatest risk factor for developing sporadic Alzheimer's is increasing age. Other factors, such as homozygosity for apolipoprotein E epsilon 4, Vascular factors such as increased blood pressure, diabetes, dyslipidemia and decreased physical activity are also associated with the development of sporadic Alzheimer's disease. In summary, Alzheimer's disease can be classified as familial or sporadic. Risk factors for developing the familial form include inheritance of mutated APP, presenilin 1 or presenilin 2 genes, and risk factors for developing the sporadic form include increasing age and expression of the apolipoprotein E epsilon 4 allele. Regardless of etiology, the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's involves extracellular amyloid beta aggregation and intracellular tau or neurofibrillary tangles. These changes are toxic to neurons and impair neuronal signaling, manifesting clinically as the features discussed earlier. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.